Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay. This is a wake up video. Please do not judge this as a normal video. This is my wake up video. It is to get me ready for the rest of my day of videos. I even just took a shower to try and get me up. Um, still exhausted. I, I got, I got fine sleep. You guys don't care. What am I thinking? So yes, uh, the Dreyfus affair. Just go easy on me. Do I have to do the intro? Just. I'm Connor. Just all the things. Uh, the original link is at the top. Let's do it. Don't judge me. Okay, let's go. The late 19th century. I don't have coffee. I can do it without coffee, all right? Was pretty, the late 19th century was pretty rough for France. It was already on its third republic, its politics were incredibly divisive, and it had suffered numerous foreign policy embarrassments. The most famous being France's catastrophic defeat at the hands of the Prussians, which led to the creation of the new German Empire, which now included the former French region of Alsace-Lorraine. France wanted this back, and the reclamation of Alsace-Lorraine became a national priority for every French government. This was easier said than done, though, since Germany was a powerful nation with a larger population, larger economy, and an army to match. This led to a paranoid culture which despised and feared the Germans in equal measure. This fear of Germany led to France investing a great deal of money and effort into its Germans in equal measure. This fear of Germany led to France investing a great deal of money and effort into its military, and this involved the creation of new weapons. The problem was that somebody in the French army was leaking the schematics of these weapons to the Germans. A French spy then found a rip note in the German embassy detailing French artillery schematics and reported it. Now, obviously, the French army was pretty keen to find and punish the man. <laughs> Jesus up there. Okay. ...some reported it. Now, obviously, the French army was pretty keen to find and punish the man responsible. The Minister for War ordered an investigation which started by focusing on those who worked in the artillery corps and those who may be sympathetic to Germany. And the man they found was Major Alfred Dreyfus, an artillery officer born in the recently lost territory of Alsace-Lorraine whose first language was German. He was arrested in late 1894 and put on trial. There was no evidence and the prosecution relied on character assassination. In fact, the only evidence they had, the note, didn't match Dreyfus's handwriting and so they argued that he intentionally used a different handwriting style to fool them. In the end, Dreyfus was found guilty of treason. What if they just like made up it and just said it was him? Sorry. Okay. That he intentionally used a different handwriting style to fool them. In the end, Dreyfus was found guilty of treason and sentenced to be imprisoned in French Guiana. Of course, the main problem was that Dreyfus was innocent. The trial and subsequent verdict weren't very well known in France until 1896, when the head of French military intelligence discovered that Dreyfus wasn't the man giving information to Germany, but instead yeah. it was a certain Major Ferdinand Esterhazy. Esterhazy went to trial in 1898, but since the French high command had already convicted Dreyfus, they didn't want to look silly, and so he was found not in So that's Henry VIII. That's um, Napoleon. Who's this guy? But since the French high command had already convicted Dreyfus, they didn't want to look silly, and so he was found not guilty and pressured to resign, which he did and then lived out the rest of his life in England. This was obviously a bit of a scandal, but things came to a head when Emile Zola, a well-respected novelist, wrote a headline article accusing the French government of imprisoning Dreyfus simply because he was a convenient scapegoat. And he argued that the primary reason this happened was that Dreyfus was Jewish. You see, France, like much of Europe, had been going through a bit of an anti- It's just the go-to of imprisoning Dreyfus simply because he was a convenient scapegoat. And he argued that the primary reason this happened was that Dreyfus was Jewish. You see, France, like much of Europe, had been going through a bit of an anti-Semitic phase for the past 2,000 years, and so Dreyfus got little sympathy. So Sorry, I needed, I needed it. I needed the coffee. I like my coffee like I like my men. Airplane. Joke. That was a little joke of mine. Okay. All right, I got my coffee. Let's continue. Primary reason this happened bit. was that Dreyfus was Jewish. 
You see, France, like much of Europe, had been going through a bit of an anti-Semitic phase for the past 2,000 years, and so Dreyfus got little sympathy. Zola's article sparked public outcry, and the nation, already bitterly split down political lines, was embroiled in a new fierce national argument over Dreyfus and over anti-Semitism in France. Those who sided with Dreyfus, the Dreyfusians, were often liberal-leaning... If I had, like, a, I, a tea, I wasn't crying, I was just... I'm, I'm tired. ...and over anti-Semitism in France. Those who sided with Dreyfus, the Dreyfusians, were often liberal-leaning Republicans who cherished the French principles of equality and justice. Those who sided against him were often conservative Catholic monarchists who saw the military as an incorruptible bastion of stability and honour. When Zola himself was tried and imprisoned, things got more radical and many Dreyfusians coalesced around the... That socialist. Jesus... Picture always makes me laugh. All right, sorry. Zola himself was tried and imprisoned. Things got more radical, and many Dreyfusians coalesced around the Socialist Party. In 1899, France's Supreme Court ruled that Dreyfus had been unlawfully convicted, and so he was returned to France, where he was promptly arrested by the military and put on trial for conducting espionage against France on behalf of Germany and found guilty. This time, the French High Command were prepared and had opted simply to forge evidence against Dreyfus. To put it mildly, there was a French. Who is that, guys? I know this is not my best reaction video. I'm sorry, I'm waking up. I feel. But who is this? Who is this middle picture in the background? Sorry. Commanding espionage against France on behalf of Germany and found guilty. This time, the French High Command were prepared and had opted simply to forge evidence against Dreyfus. To put it mildly, there was a lot of anger on both sides, and France was pleased to forge evidence. Signed Alfred Dreyfus, who's a spy. It's against Dreyfus. To put it mildly, there was a lot of anger on both sides, and France was plagued by widespread anti-Semitic riots. There was also international outcry as nations like Italy and Britain fiercely condemned French justice as a sham, whereas Germany said nothing, oddly enough. The French president wanted to put an end to all of this, and so he pardoned Dreyfus in 1899 on the condition that he admit his guilt. Dreyfus, having spent years away from his family, just wanted it all over with, and so he did so. And after this, you'd think that everything would be sorted, but fun fact, no. In 1905, a report was published about the affair, which condemned the French military's forging of evidence, as well as the bit where it let the real culprit go. This led to the French president quashing all charges against Dreyfus, rehabilitating his reputation and reinstating him in the army. Dreyfus soon after left the army because, obviously, and one would assume that he'd hold a grudge against the institution that had falsely imprisoned him. Yet, when World War I broke out, he went back to service and fought at the Battle of Verdun, which was more than many had expected of him. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching with a special thank, thank you for making. Guys, I, I feel a bit more awake. Don't worry. I'll be back on my game. Till next time. Awesome video like always. Uh, see you guys next time.